Hey there, on today's episode, we're gonna transform this bench from this to this. Stay tuned to see how we did it. Now let's get started with demo. We're actually gonna have to go back over a year to show this demo process because that was when the original Lake House first floor was completely demoed and I have a whole video series on this so you can go back and watch those. But anyway, I tore out the laminate flooring on the wall here, not sure on the design choice there. Then I tore out the laminate flooring on the bench. And now we can bring it back to present day. As you can see, we have a raised floor now. We have tile in and a few other design features, but the foam just arrived for the bench, so let's unbox that. Next up, I was trying to get rid of these window openers to make room for the new bench, however, those were not coming out, so we're going to have to work around those. I was then investigating the piece of wood that the bench is going to be sitting on and realized that it goes underneath the windows and underneath all of the trim, and so I had to figure out a way on how to get this out of there uh, without damaging anything else, and I ended up going to my oscillating tool for that. Now because of the way that this board was installed, I'm going to have to cut around the perimeter so I can remove it. Now ideally, I would just put a board over top of this, but because of the mechanism used to open and close the windows, I wouldn't be able to actually put the bench in here. So I'm going to have to remove this board, and because of the way it was installed, I'm gonna have to cut around the perimeter. It might take a little while, but I think it's the only option, unfortunately. So I'm gonna use my oscillating tool to go ahead and do that. Let's get to it. This part was quite tricky because I wasn't exactly sure how this board was secured or how far it went down. I also had to go around all these windows and these tight corners with my oscillating tool, and whoever used one of these before, you know that it doesn't cut extremely well, so this took quite a long time, but I'll have kept guard while I was cutting away. Now let's see if we can pull this thing out. Man, that was a lot more difficult than I was expecting, and it turns out there's a whole nother board underneath that, but we're just gonna leave that one in there and use the one that we already took out. And we're actually just gonna use it as the backing to our bench since we know it's already a perfect fit, no need to cut a whole new board. I then used the vacuum to clean up all the dust from the oscillating tool. And you might be wondering why it was so difficult to take out? Well, here's your answer, four inch nails. I don't think these were necessary, but apparently the builders did. There were also these corrugated metal pieces that were used to hold it in, so I cut those out as well. Now that we have the board cleaned up, it's time to make a few adjustments. The first adjustment is that we need to extend the depth of the board two and a half inches. So I cut some scrap OSB to that exact size and we'll adhere it to the front like this. The second adjustment is that we need to raise up the board three quarters of an inch. And so I also cut up some scrap OSB and we'll put that on the bottom like this and that'll just raise up the entire board the exact amount of three quarters of an inch, as well as give us a way to screw in this front board without having to use pocket holes or glue or anything like that. So let's get to it. Let's go see if it fits. So we can go ahead and take it out, add our foam, and then our fabric. I found this fabric at a local store here in the area, and it's really nice because it's a little bit thicker than your average fabric, and it has a nice texture to it as well. I bought the foam online, and I'll make sure to link it down in the description. It's about three inches thick, six inches long, and two feet wide. To mark out the foam on where I would need to cut it, I found the easiest way was just to lay our piece of plywood on top of it and trace it out with the Sharpie. Alright, now that we have our perimeter traced out, we can go ahead and cut it out. Surprisingly, the best tool to cut this foam is actually an electric turkey carving knife, which I've used in the past, but right now I can't find it, so I'm going to have to use some scissors, but these should make do. Let's get to it. We 
now have all the foam cut out and I actually didn't have that many leftovers so we had just enough. I also left about an inch of an overhang here on the front and I did that on purpose so that when I wrap the fabric around, hopefully the front edge is nice and covered with a little bit of foam so that your back of your knee doesn't get caught on any of this wood. Normally upholstery like this is done with a staple gun that's pneumatic hooked up to an air compressor. However, I don't have one, I just have a nail gun, but I do have a manual stapler, so I'll be using this to go around and staple everything. I'm by no means an expert, but I'm going to start in the middle and kind of work my way to the edges, pulling it as taut as I can as I go. Once the bench was in, I could add in the final piece of trim. This was already installed previously, so I knew it was already cut to the right size. I just had to re-nail it in place. And you can see here how the middle was sagging a little bit, but I just made sure to apply some pressure upward and then nail it in place. And this really covers up the front edge of the bench nicely. It makes it a nice seamless look. The bench is now complete, but I wanted to add a few more items to the wall to finish off the room. We recently got a billiards table, so I added a rack to store all of the cues. And then we also found these really cool old water skis at a garage sale around here for $20, and they were actually used by a famous uh, water ski in the late 50s so that was a pretty cool addition to the item given that this is a lake house i also found this piece at a local antique store and then we got some of these old cool posters as we're big into f1 and cars so i thought this was a cool look and added some color to the space also if you've been on the fence about buying a laser i highly recommend picking one up as you can see i used it to align these posters in a perfect row and it just makes life so much easier And that's going to be a wrap on this week's project. If you have any questions about the build or the video, please leave them down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on the final design. It's crazy to think that this is what the room looked like just over a year ago, and here we are today. I'm really loving the color scheme, and we found that the bench is a great spot to take a rest in between rounds of pool. I also really like this fabric, as from a distance, it's not too drying, but up close you can see that there's actually a pretty intricate pattern. And if you enjoyed the video, please Hulk smash that like button as it really helps out the channel and we have a ton more DIY projects on the docket. Next Saturday, I'll have a kitchen update for you, including installing some of this kitchen wire. So get subscribed and stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.